Well, Merry Christmas to everyone. Uh, we welcome you back to our discipleship program from River of Life Assembly here in Miramichi, New Brunswick, Canada. And uh, to each one of you that are watching on YouTube or Facebook through uh, media sources, we welcome you and we just trust that the Lord will bless you and that his word will enrich your life and you'll be drawn closer to him. And uh, we want to take this moment to extend you a special Happy New Year's greeting, just a New Year's, just a couple of days away. And uh, we look back and are thankful for all the blessings God has placed upon us in this past year. His hand of protection, his, the health that he's given us, the strength that he's given us, uh, his provision, just uh, his blessings that he pours out upon our hearts and our lives every day. And uh, he is good. And I've been reminded of that again and again over this Christmas season when I see the goodness of God and how he has enriched my life. And I thank him for that. And I also thank him for our local assembly and for Nathaniel and all the work he does uh, looking after our sound system and getting us on uh, Facebook and YouTube with uh, the video. And I also thank our pastor for giving me the opportunity to be able to uh, speak to you. So before we go into the Word of God today, I'm going to uh, pray and we're going to ask God to do something special in our hearts, shall we? Father, we thank you today for your goodness and mercy. We thank you because you are on the throne. You are high and lifted up. There is no one like you, Lord. You are the great and almighty, the all-powerful, the all-wonderful God, the one and only, the one who was, who is, and is yet to come. You are the one that sits on the throne. And Lord, we worship you today. We glorify your name. We lift you up. We ask you to have your way today, Lord, as we open our hearts, as the same time as we open your word, that you would speak to us by the power of your spirit and that you would draw us close to you. I ask, Lord, that somehow what I share with people today would strengthen their hearts and give them a greater faith to walk with you and to serve you. And, Lord, perhaps those that are not serving you or walking with you today that hear this word, that they would draw close to you and surrender their hearts and find what it is to know the peace and the love of God and how real it can be in their lives. I thank you today, Lord, for your word, and I ask you to bless it today as we look to you. And I need to take a break for one second. Didn't bring my Bible to the pulpit, so I've got to grab it. It'll just be a moment. There we go. My apologies for that. Sometimes I'm a, I'm a stickler. Sometimes we have uh, all our media and different things. And we can have our scriptures put up on the screen and everything. But I like to have my Bible. And I like to be able to turn to the pages and to read from it. So uh, I apologize for not having it right here when we start. But today we're going to turn in the word of the Lord to the Psalms 119. And we're going to be talking about the faithfulness of God. A few weeks ago, we talked about our faithfulness, being having faith in God and what faith was all about. But today, I want to talk about the faithfulness of God. Faithfulness is the fact or quality of being true to one's word and commitment. The fact or quality of being true to one's word or commitment as to what one has pledged to do or professes to believe, etc. So it's what you have promised to do and what you've pledged to do, what you profess to believe. And uh, the psalmist David, countless times throughout the word of God, he tells us about the faithfulness of God. And I want to read one uh, setting of scripture for you today that David wrote. The 119th chapter of the book of Psalms going to start reading at verse 89. Your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You establish the earth and it endures. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. Time after time throughout the Old Testament, you hear the phrase, 
the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. Why did they use that phrase? They used that phrase to, to denote the promise that had been given to Abraham, the father of the faithful, he is known as. And that promise that God had given him, he said, to you and your seed and, your chil- and their children, he said, I'm going to pass on this blessing. And God ca- made that promise, and he was faithful to keep it. That's why he was known as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because it passed through from generation to generation. David said, Your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You establish the earth and it endures. You see, God is faithful. It's a part of the very attribute and character of God. He is faithful. 1 Corinthians, Paul writing to the New Testament church, he says it this way, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9. God, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus, our Christ, our Lord, is faithful. He is faithful. It's a part of his nature. It's a part of his character. He is. The Word of God says, The promises of God are yea and amen to them that believe. Why? Because if he made a promise, he will keep it. He is faithful. So God is a faithful God. 2 Timothy, listen to what he says here. 2 Timothy, the second chapter, and verse 13. If we are faithless, okay, it's talking about us. If we are faithless, he, referring to God, will remain faithful for he cannot disown himself. Even if we are slow in keeping our promise, even if we fail to keep up to what he has requested, the Bible says he is faithful. Even though we may not be, he is faithful. There are so many wonderful benefits of serving a faithful God. You know, The benefits of God include the fact that God preserves, protects, and guards His children. He preserves, protects, and guards His children. He will set His angels as a watch over us. He will protect us. The Bible says that He who watches over Israel, referring in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, Israel is those that are born again of the water and of the Spirit, that have, been, have repented and asked Jesus Christ into their life, those, they are the faithful. And he says that the one who watches over the faith, he never slumbers or sleeps. He has an eye on them. He has an eye on them. So he preserves, protects, and guards his faith, his children. His pro- he has promises that he has given to us that he will be faithful to do. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For, if it, uh, for in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's the promise. And friend, He will keep his promises. He has blessings for the faithful. His mercies are new every morning and his blessings fall upon us day by day. He just mounds up the blessing. He pours it on us. And uh, the last uh, few weeks, every morning when my wife and I take a a few moments to start the day in prayer and we're continually thanking God for his blessings and his goodness when we see the things that he's doing. And sometimes the things that we have prayed about that uh, we don't even see the result of. And it's three and four months later when we find out that something had happened three months earlier when we were praying. 
that God heard and answered our prayer. That's the way he is. He continually blesses us. And he strengthens those that love him and serve him. He's that type of a God. He gives us strength. The Bible says strength for the day. Isn't that a wonderful thing? You know, sometimes they think, oh, you know, I, this, this, what I'm facing uh, next week or next month. But God doesn't promise something for them. But he says, I will give you strength for the day. So when you wake up tomorrow morning and those things that you're facing, you're going to go through and you don't know how you're going to do it, God will give you the strength to go through it that day. He'll give it to you that day. And he guides us. The Bible says, that he will give us this, the promise of his Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. And it's so wonderful to be able to trust in God. And sometimes we don't even hardly understand how it is that just a gentle prodding in our, in our hearts and in our spirit uh, causes us to make a decision to do something in a certain way. And then all of a sudden, within a, a short period of time, we'll see, wow, if I hadn't done it that way, this would have never happened, but because I did it that way. Look at the beautiful and great, wonderful result that came about. Because he guides us. He directs us. He helps us. We're going to look at a few more scriptures this morning. 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And we're going to look at verse 13. First Corinthians 10 and verse 13. And let's see. I'm going to start at verse 12. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. As I mentioned, he gives you strength for the day. He will not allow you to be tempted above what you're able to bear. And if it's something comes along, he will give you the strength to stand up under it because God is faithful. That's the, that's the prerequisite. That's the, the, the underlying statement there. God is faithful. Second Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 3. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. The Lord is faithful. He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. So constantly we're finding throughout the Gospels, throughout the Epistles, time after time, we are being told through the word of God that God is faithful. So he says here, he will protect you. He will strengthen you. He will keep you from the evil one. Hebrews, the Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verse 23. Paul writing says it this way. And 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For if he who promised is faithful, for he who has promised is faithful, so let us hold fast unswervingly to the hope we profess, because he who promised is faithful. So we don't have to fear. We don't have to worry whether or not God will come through. We don't have to question whether or not God cares about us. We do not have to uh, be concerned if whether or not God is on the throne. He has promised some things and he is faithful. The Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy. I'm going to turn back there for a moment. And Deuteronomy. There we go. 
Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. The God who is your God, the Lord your God is God, he is the faithful God. It's part of his very being part of his attributes, part of his character, his very nature, to be faithful. And he has promised. And he'll love you and be with you to a thousand generations. There's another passage of Scripture that we're going to look at just for a few moments before we draw to a close. The New Testament. This is found in 2 Peter. Second Peter, the third chapter. And I want us to notice. Now, in this passage of Scripture, it does not use the word faithfulness. But it uses other words that connotate the same meaning. And I want us to listen to what it says. Second Peter, the third chapter, and verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. King James uses the word slack. God is not slack, as some men count slackness. Here in the NIV, he uses the word slow. God is not slow in keeping his promise, as some men consider slowness. But he is patient with you, not, any, not wanting anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance. You see, he's not slow concerning his promise. He has stamped it, it's settled. He's confirmed it. He is going to keep his promise. And though it may seem like it takes a while for that promise to be fulfilled, he has made the promise. He is faithful. He is going to keep it. It's signed, sealed, and delivered. It's done. And friend, today, that thing that you've been praying about that thing that you've been concerned about and burdened down by, that you've cried out to God on numerous occasions and asked God to help. I have a message for you today. He is faithful. He has heard your cry. He has listened to your petition. He has seen your tears. He knows your heart. And he is faithful. He will hear. He has heard. And he will answer. This past uh, week we were talking to some folks and an individual and she had told me that someone that we have been praying for for quite a long time that they would know God and experience Him and surrender their lives to Him. In the middle of their living room, he had got down on his knees and surrendered his heart to you, to God. And, uh, you know, been praying for it, <clears throat> been praying for it for quite a while. Didn't even know what had happened. We're still praying for it that God had already heard and God had already answered because he is faithful. 
And when you pray, there's some things that when we pray, we know are the, it is the will of God. So as the scripture says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. He is patient with you. And here's where we draw our strength from. He says, not wanting any to perish, but that all should come to repentance. So in that area, I have faith in my heart and I know the will of God is that men and women be touched by the power of God and surrender their lives to him and become born again, that they repent of their sins and ask Jesus into their heart. So when I pray that prayer, I have faith that God will hear and answer. I may not know where or when, but I know he will. He is not slack. He is not slow concerning his promises. His promises, King James says, they are yea and amen to them that believe. And today, I look at a faithful God who sits upon the throne, who rules and reigns in the hearts and lives of men, and he reigns in this world. We ask for his kingdom to come and his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, and he is doing his will, and his kingdom is being established in this earth. Lives are being touched. Hearts are being changed. Men and women are being saved by the power of the gospel. And today, friend, that thing that you have been burdened about, that thing that you have asked God seem like continually, don't stop asking. Keep on seeking. The word of God says, if you ask, keep on asking. If you knock, keep on knocking. Because to him that knocks, it will be open. To him that asks, he will receive. And sometimes it's simply because of your persistence, continually asking causes the answer to come. So don't give up. Keep on holding on to him. God is faithful. He has heard your cry. And he will be there to help you and to provide. Let's bow our heads today. Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. We thank you because you're on the throne. You're in control. And Lord, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from you. And Lord, we thank you for all of your blessings that you pour on us each day. But Lord, if there wasn't any blessings, if there wasn't any other good thing that came upon into our lives because directly from you, we still would worship you and love you because you have, are the lover of our souls. You are the Savior that died on Calvary and shed your blood for us. You who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. You loved us with an everlasting love and you care about us. So Lord, we place ourselves in your hands right now and we commit each one that's listening to this broadcast and watching that you would speak to their hearts you would draw them by your spirit and encourage them and fill their hearts with faith because they had serve a faithful God who hears and answers prayer. You're not slow, but you are faithful. And you are going to hear and answer their prayers today. Lord, we commit them into your hands. We ask your blessings upon them. Thank you for this past year and all the blessings it held. And Lord, for the future that we have for this coming year, for what it holds. There's some great and wonderful things and experiences we're going to have with you. And we praise you and we thank you for it, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We trust the Lord will continue to minister to you and be with you throughout the remainder of this week. Thank you and a happy new year.